say that I am unable to log in. What you do? The most uh, asked interview question. So whenever the people, how the people will answer, I will check whether application and data, database has a connectivity or not, whether the server is up and running. No boss, don't go with that. What is your question? User unable to log in. First check whether only that user is unable to log in or all the users are unable to log in. When you are able to log in, that means your server is up and running. Yes, don't give that answer. So think about that user perspective only first. Then come to application level, then come to database level, then come to OS level. Don't just directly say, I'll check the database, I'll check whether application server is up and running or not. No. Your answer should be meaningful. So first think whether what is the user, the issues from the user end. The first issue is what sometimes what happens the user will hit wrong password that may also not able to login into the system first check that then user will be expired ask him to send the screenshot so in border you will say the user is expired that message will appear Sometimes the GUI setting, for example, he is lagging with the GUI in that the instance number is somewhat 6. Someone changed that. Accidentally, your kids changed that. Then your application server number is 00. How can you log in with the 06? Yes, check the GUI settings of that user. So check the network connection. Check the network connection. Check GUI settings. Check whether that user's password is expired. The user is expired. First, to do all these things from the user perspective. Then, sometimes uh, one parameter is there. That parameter also restricting the users. A maximum number of connected terminals means, for example, one application server. There is one parameter called R display slash TM terminals under underscore max underscore number. So only hundred users are allowed with that application server. We can restrict that also by using this parameter. Whether check whether the parameter is reached. That's why you are unable to get login. How many members are logged into the system? Sometimes what happened? Now come to application level. Or the database level or OS level. Whether you are up, which client you are logged in. Check whether that client is locked or not. If the client is locked, you are unable to log in. Then check whether your application server is up and running or not. Which application server you are trying to log in? Whether that, for example, I have 10 application servers. One user of 9th application server is complaining. Check whether that 9th application server is up and running or not. And check whether all the file system is got fully utilized. That means user SAP directory fully utilized. There is no space for creating a new logs. Then also user unable to log in. That is at application level. From the database level, archive struck will happen sometimes. What is the archive struck? If your ORA archive directory fills, your redo log files will not be backed up. When you, if it will allow you to log in, you will do something. It will create redo log files. It has to load into the archive log files. That's why there may be chance of losing the data. That's why the system will hang you. It won't allow you to log in. So first of all, you need to check from the user perspective, not application and the database. First to check whether that user got expired or not. What is the GA settings for that user? What is the network connectivity? Is he connecting from his network to the application server? Check whether that application server is up and running or not. Okay, check whether the file system is fully utilized. Check whether a connected number of terminals utilized or not. Check whether any archive stack. Check whether your application and database got connection connectivity or not. For that, what we need to do? hit r3 trans hyphen d that is r3 trans hyphen d the command is r3 trans hyphen d if you hit r3 trans hyphen d then it will give the output as 0 or 12 if the output is 12 that means database and application has no connectivity then how can you log in if the written code is 0 0 0 0 0 then it is fine 
see archive check is one of the reason GUI settings network issues client may be locked user may be expired that application server may be down archive check may be happened now these are the things you need to discuss the system is not starting then what you do that is another question the server is not starting where you do check so uh, when you start your SAP system first where it will go to profiles directly if your system is not starting means check whether anyone changed that profiles to start profile is not there if instance profile is not there how your system will start right and check whether anyone has changed that profiles if somebody changed that profile you will definitely get dot one dot two backup files right that you need to check then why the instance will not start I should also we discuss this because of shared, shared, memory. shared memory issue right whether shared memory is clear or not check that okay and first thing where you do for example dispatcher is not starting where you check developer trees file of dispatcher what is the location of developer trees file of dispatcher your instance and work directory day underscore d dot if message server is not starting go to that location if nq is not starting go to day underscore nq server so you have to check the work directory first check the work directory okay <clears throat> Check whether profiles are available or not. Check whether all your services are up and running or not. What are the services? SAP host control and SAP schema services. And especially uh, when it comes to Oracle database, TNS listener service. Oracle. TNS listeners. Yeah, check whether all that services are working or not. The main thing is this one. Check the work directly first. When you start your MM, by using MMCR command, what is not starting? The system is not starting, a dispatcher is not starting, then go to that respective from the work there. Then check profiles. Okay, then try to clear the shared memory. Then hit R3 trans hyphen D at the command prompt. If the written code is zero, okay, application and database has a connectivity. If the written code is 12, something is problem with the database or application. Okay, sometimes this uh, page memory, what you give as a virtual memory, na, that also not sufficient. So sometimes you need to change that value. Check whether there is network connectivity or not. So these are the things you need to check. Check whether anyone changed the environment variable. Okay, I'll show you that things. When you start your system by using MMC, okay, this is my MMC. Everything comes to screen. Yeah. This is your MMC, right? So now dispatcher is gray out. That means dispatcher is not starting. If your message server is not starting, this will be grey out. This process list, message server. If this dispatcher is not starting, where you check, go to that instances work directory first. Go to that USR, SAP, SIDs, instance name, and work directory. Then day underscore disp. You need to check this file. If dispatcher is not running. If message server is not running, Go to your ACS under that work directory. Day underscore MS. If the old don't 
look at the old log, the new logs. NQ server is not set. Day one does query. This is the first thing what you need to do. Okay, fine. Then check whether all the profiles are there or not. USR, SAP, SID, Sys, profile. So it will read the profile. If some your instance profiles are missing, a default profile is missing, the system won't start. Okay, when it, if you have some dot one file, check when he is changed. If it is changed recently, just replace this name, delete this one and replace this name. That remove the dot one. So it will read this file and it will start. This is one of the thing. And at the command level, hit R3 trans hyphen D to check the connectivity between application and the database. Simple R3 trans hyphen D. Actually, why we use that R3 trans means who will connect to the database? You know, while importing and exporting R3 trans only. No? If R3 trans is connecting to the database, means your application is connecting to your database. What is your written code? 0000. That is everything is fine. If you are getting 0012, there is no connectivity between application and the database. Then try to start the database manually. You know how to start the database. Connect to your skill prompt and say startup. Then try to start the application. And check whether anyone has changed your environment variable. So if it is a Windows operating system, if it is a shared memory issue, then simple. You can restart the system, it will solve. If it is a Linux system, clean IPC command is there. And another thing is, go to your environment variables. What is the meaning of environment variables? Check your advanced settings. Check your virtual memory. Sometimes this virtual memory also creates problems. Whether virtual memory is properly configured, 20, uh, 20,000 MB. Yes, it is 25,000 MB. Okay, fine. Now, here we have environment variables. What is the meaning of environment variable? Means whenever you install any software, how the system knows when you start that. For example, I started this SAP logon pad. How the system knows which location I should go and start that. Ex there will be some executable file for this, right? Where to start? Everything will be recorded at environment variable. In this environment variable, you have two things, user variables and system variables. The system will read this path. See, when you start the OS now, it will go to this path. Okay, see, path. When you start Oracle, it is going to some bin directory. See, all these things. So, all these things are automatically set. System 32 Windows, this is the path of all your softwares. So, the system will read these paths. See, if I install Oracle database now, by default Oracle will come. So Windows Windows directory, see Windows root directory, username, see, did you set this one? Oracle TNS name, database type Oracle, did you set all these things? No. You When you install now, automatically these environment variables are setting. If somebody deleted this, then the system won't know how to start the database. And who is the user of your schema? They don't know. Then how can they start? To check whether all the environment variables are properly configured or not. To check your virtual memory, page memory, check environment variables, check profiles, check your work directory, clear your shared memory, check your profiles. These are the things you need to check whether when your system is not starting. Is this clear? Network issue also. Network issue, uh, space issue, and clean up the shared memory. Check the profile directory. Check the start profile. Check developer trace files, and check the services. How you check? So go to services.msc whether all the services are up and running or not. Okay, I'll show you that also. You know that, right? How to check the services? Go to services.msc. Check 
check whether your SAP services are running or not. Post control is running. Schema services are running. Okay, then what is your database? Oracle. Then Oracle TNS is there. If it is not running, na, connectivity will not happen. If your return code is 12, first check TNS listener is running or not. This Oracle services. Check. Okay. Everything is fine. If everything is fine, the system will start. You will get any problem. The database connectivity issue, the network issue, the problem may be anything. Someone deleted your environment variables. Someone deleted your profiles. Some memory issue happened to your dispatcher. You need to check all these things. And what is that next question? System refresh prerequisites. You all know that, right? I don't want to discuss again and again. We discussed that all things yes, for sir. three days, I think. The next question is what is the next question? Transport, transport troubleshooting. Transport. transport troubleshooting. What you do if the transport is running for a long time? You know the transport troubleshooting also. So <laughs> First of all, check your uh, co-file data file generated or not. Okay. How you check? There you can see that uh, transport request number and related that uh, co-file K start, uh, data file starts with R. Okay. Check whether TP is working or not. How you check that? By running RSTP test. And check whether your temp directory is updating or not. Check the logs. In log directory, you can check the logs. And check whether your TR byte and TR job got any old entries go to sc16 and open that tables and if there are any old entries remove that and check whether any background work process available or not why you need background work process so in a, in a transport what happens rdd impdp will be scheduled that will trick some rdd jobs to run that rdd jobs background jobs you need query background work process check whether any background work process are free or not check whether rdd impdp is scheduled or not how do you check go to sc SM36 and the SM37, then there's search. You will get that RDD IMPD. If not scheduled, schedule RDD new PP. So these are the things you know. You know all these things, right? See, check RDD IMPD, check the logs, trans directory, RSTP tool, okay? Temp directory, STMS import over you. There also you'll get a log. <coughs> In uh, SC01, also you'll get a log. If you give the transport request number, na, it will give you the log. Go to SC01. Yesterday also we discussed this one, na, SC01, and give the transport request number. Okay, display. Oh, sorry. Give a transport request number here. Just display. Transport request number here and say logs. It will give the logs. And in the STMS also import monitor is there. There you can check all these things. Next question. Kernel troubleshooting. Kernel troubleshooting. Kernel troubleshooting we discussed yesterday also we discussed. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, if the kernel is having some problem. First check. Same thing whatever you the problem with the system first check in your work directory was what is not starting kernel troubleshooting is what after doing the kernel operation your system is not starting that is the problem what is not starting dispatcher is not starting necessary is not starting if a dispatcher is not starting go to day underscore dw if necessary is not starting go to day underscore ms and check whether uh, try to clear the shared memory and try to read that uh, related notes and for example, dispatcher is not running. Try whether any dispatcher a patch is there in that kernel newly released at service marketplace and try to uninstall your SAP SRV service. Okay. 